Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert Sean Stevenson here with my amazing, talented co-host and producer of the Model Health Show. Put you in a little suspense. You did. Jade Harrell. What's up, Jade? <laughs> What's up, Sean? How are you doing today? Well, today I am Magna Awesome. Magna Awesome. Mm-hmm. I like this. I like the direction <laughs> that this is headed. So what does that mean? I am magnificently awesome today. I like that. Yes. I, like, I thought that was like some ancient Rome well, stuff. Yeah, like it was Magna. Ma- it yeah, was. I get it was. It. I actually got it from one of our listeners in a okay. review. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like that. Thank you, guys. Magna Awesome. Shout out to Magna Awesome. Well, everybody, thank you so much for tuning into the show today. We've got an incredible guest Don't on, a uh, true pioneer in this field, yeah. and um, just a great mm-hmm. teacher and a very, uh, he's a gift in this field of helping to communicate this information with the mass public. You know, we've been talking about a lot of these different things over the years with this with this particular show and also mm-hmm. in my practice prior to this, and to have somebody so adept in this science and also who's been practicing in medicine for so many years to embrace this information to try stuff out on himself oh my goodness that's really what tells me when i really buy into uh a speaker a physician or whatever the 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 person's field is is do they do it themselves Mm -hmm. that's what you have in common yeah and he practices what he preaches and he's (laughs) just an outstanding teacher outstanding human being and we're gonna be talking about fat we're gonna talk about fat don't we love not the phat kind all right i see you (laughs) Pretty hot and tempting. Not that kind of fat. Not that one. But dietary fat and also the fat on our bodies. Uh, All right. So we're going to talk about how does this stuff relate. Friendly fat and fat the foe. Whatever you said. All right. We're doing some Winnie the Pooh poetry now. All right. Indeed. Shout out to shout out to Owl. Al doesn't get a lot of respect in those Winnie the Pooh Neither stories, you know. Eeyore, you know. Eeyore does a lot of. You see the Eeyore on T-shirts. Well, Nobody least, talks about yeah, Al, Al gets the wise love. one, who's like, guys, right. don't do that. All right, <laughs> we don't got to, you know. Anyways, He's a kill. so before we do, yeah. give a quick shout out to our show sponsor, oh, Onit.com. Sure. Mm-hmm. Head over to o n n i t dot com forward slash m o d e l, and you're gonna get ten percent off all of your health and human performance supplements. You've got to make sure that you're on that Shroom Tech Sport, guys. Oh, sure. Shroom Tech Sport, the pre-workout based on cordyceps mushroom, clinically proven to increase endurance, clinically proven to in- increase your insulin sensitivity. Yes. When your cells start to, they're not sensitive anymore like mm-hmm. you used to be. Why are you not sensitive? Right. You should be more sensitive. Because I had to toughen up <laughs> to get through these workouts. <laughs> Thousands of years of documented history mm-hmm. in Chinese medicine, and today our science, you know, our quote modern science, mm-hmm. is affirming its efficacy and its effectiveness. And... They've got that in here, and also rhodiola. Love it. Rhodiola has been sipped on as tea mm-hmm. by the Russians <laughs> for centuries to improve endurance, but also it helps to uh, activate, kind of balance that parasympathetic, uh, sympathetic nervous system uh, discombobulation that can happen. You know, get you more in balance. They've also got green tea extract in there, yes. uh, methylcobalamin, the uh, uh, methylated form, more digestible form of B12. It's fantastic supplement. Earth-grown nutrients they're using for everything, every ingredient in the products. Also, the Hemp Force Protein, uh, the Hemp hemp Recovery Shake. Now they got the Recovery like Protein. Head over, check them out. O-N-N-I-T dot com forward slash model. Now let's get to the iTunes Review of the Week. Right. Well, this one says phenomenal information and easily applicable solutions. Five stars from Meow Mix. <laughs> Sean and Jade are both fantabulous, magna awesome podcast hosts. They're easy to follow segments and breakdown of new information. Keep me informed in the most enjoyable way. I've listened to other health podcasts, but keep coming back to this one in particular because of their ability to provide actionable items and little health changes that I currently implement in my life. As a social media manager in the fitness industry, even my coworkers have started to take notice of this wealth of knowledge. I continue to share Things like the benefits of heat shock proteins released in the sauna to the importance of using night shift mode on your phone and laptop. I'm officially a lifelong listener and forever a student of both of them. I love that. I do. <laughs> so much good stuff there. Okay. Even putting some of the insights. I love it. And that. gave me my word. Thank you. And I remember you from Instagram, uh-huh. by the way. You guys know I'm on Instagram oh, at Sean Model. I reckon it. It's yeah, it's hot. Yeah, it's, it is. it's hot. Yeah. My Instagram Insta story. My Instagram is pretty hot. So yeah. definitely check me out. And Blazing. by the way, thank you so much for leaving the reviews on iTunes. Everybody it means the world to me. And on that note, let's it's get to our connected. special guest. Yes, tell him. And our topic of the day. And we have on the legendary oh living goodness. legend, <laughs> Dr. Mark Iman. And that. his more his most recent book, Eat Fat, Get Thin. He's also got a cookbook. Hey, you know, I coming, you know, this was a New York Times bestseller, crushed it. It's such a good book. He's just mm-hmm, great. Mm-hmm. He's great. The way that he 
uh, puts all the information together. His communication style, it's amazing. So uh, Mark Hyman, MD, is the director of uh, the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine and the Pritzker Foundation Chair in Functional Medicine at Cleveland Clinic, chairman of the Institute for Functional Medicine and founder of the Ultra Wellness Center. Yeah, he's important, guys. Yeah. <laughs> he's important. He's the number one New York Times bestselling author of 12 books. Ka-ching. Come on. Come on. Uh, including The Blood Sugar Solution, The Blood Sugar Sugar Solution, 10-Day Detox Diet, Ultra Metabolism, and uh, The Ultra Mind Solution, one of my favorite books, Ultra Simple Diet, and co-author of The Daniel Plan and Ultra oh, Prevention yes. with Dr. Yes, Daniel yes, Amen, yes, a good friend of it, ours. Yes. So, and I'd like to welcome to the Model Health Show, wow. Dr. Mark Hyman. How are you doing today, Mark? Great, John. How's it going, guys? So I'm happy to have you here and I personally get to find out. So what is your superhero origin story, Mark? How did you get interested in health and wellness, like spe- specifically medicine in the beginning? Like, did you grow up with this kind of stuff around you? Oh, my God. You, like, no, no. I, I, like I was the us? furthest thing from being a doctor you could imagine. I was studying Buddhism in college. I was uh, really out there and philosophy and wow. politics. And I couldn't care less about medicine or healthcare. And then I began to study the medicine Buddha and understand about the healing nature of of this tradition. Mm-hmm. And I understood that, you know, like, wow, you know, like there was a lot of suffering in the world and that a way I could potentially help is by being a doctor. So I sort of just got inspired to try it. I didn't know I was going to like it. I thought I'll try it. If I don't like it, I'll quit. But I kind of liked it. And then throughout my career, I began to study more nutrition and more understanding about health. I was a yoga teacher before I was a doctor. Uh, which is pretty amazing. I finished yoga teacher training 33 years ago where wow. no one even heard of yoga. They never, there was no such thing as Lululemon, you know, like it was, <laughs> you know, there was nothing like that. It was just a bunch of weirdos doing yoga. And, uh, and now it's, it's like mainstream. And then I started nutrition in college and, and then I got sick. Um, and I, I got really sick, uh, with chronic fatigue from mercury poisoning living in China. And I ended up having to re-engineer, reverse engineer, really, my own health. And every system, every cell in my body broke down. My immune system, my gut, my brain, my hormones, everything shut off. And it forced me to really ask hard questions about, God, you know, is everything I learned in medical school the whole story? Or is there another way of thinking about the body? And I realized that we didn't learn anything about health. We learned about the science of disease not about the science of creating health. And that's what functional medicine is. And it led me to functional medicine, which helped me to sort of heal myself and then begin to work with patients. And that's really why I've written now 13 books for the cookbook, because I'm so passionate about getting people empowered with the stories. I mean, I, I, I did the book launch last night in New York City, and we had so many people come. This one woman came up and she said, I've been following this low-fat diet for my heart disease. I've had high blood pressure, angina, heart disease. I was 75 pounds overweight. I couldn't fix it. I followed your approach. I lost 75 pounds. My blood pressure normalized. My heart disease went away. I mean, it was really pretty astounding to see these kinds of results that we just never saw using this old approach. So food is the most powerful drug, and it's really what I use every day in my practice to help people heal. I love that. Yes. What a great statement. Oh, yes. Food is the most powerful drug. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these and stories. And uses the drug to heal. Yes, That's yes. the prescription he's writing. I mean, I, I, my, my new prescriptions are cookbooks. And when I, when I have patients, I don't give them a prescription pad. I give them a cookbook. That's it. Wow. That's you profound. I'm not, no, I'm not joking. Like right. when patients come off, they don't get a prescription. They, I literally go, here's my cookbook. Do this. And then, you know, save all your money. Don't come see me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's this is a paradigm shift. And what's so great about your work is that, you know, you do hit a, a chord, you know, with you being uh, uh, an MD with this information, you know, staying up to date with the research, which is something that's lacking in yeah. kind of modern med- medicine right now, conventional medicine. It's not uh, an, an unwillingness to heal people. It's just a lack of the right information and being able to access that. And you've made this available not just to your patients, but to other physicians and, and healthcare providers that's right. as well. That's right. I and mean, we have a whole training institute for physicians. We started the Cleveland Clinic Center for Functional Medicine. We're really trying to change the thinking about it all. But, you know, the problem is that most of the science that gets done often is ignored because it's not pushed by any professional agencies or by pharmaceutical companies. So doctors learn a lot of what they learn from continuing a medical education, but most continual medical education is funded by pharmaceutical companies. So they're only getting a thin slice of what the data is. They're not seeing how you can reverse diabetes using diet. They're saying use these seven medications and do gastric bypass surgery. I'm like, they're really not getting the true story. So 
I'm really excited about the shifts that are happening, starting to happen in medicine where doctors are recognizing that, gee, you know, we actually don't have the whole story, that we're reaching the limits of what we can do. We can't just continue to manage diabetes by adding more medications. We actually have to change what people are eating and how they're living and what they're doing. And that's a radical shift. Yeah, let's talk about this misinformation because I want today to be that definitive guide, that aha moment for people mm -hmm, that are still mm -hmm. kind of scraggling, thinking that fats are going to make them fat, that fats are going yeah. to kill them. Where did this whole twist in something we've yeah. been doing for thousands of years, eating a certain way, when did this stuff start to go sideways and to the degree that people thought that fat was the enemy? It's true. I mean, we, we've lived on a lot of fat for thousands of years. And I mean, in this country, in fact, was founded on fat, believe it or not, pemmican, which is 70% fat. It's 25% protein and like I think maybe five or ten percent cranberries and carbs mm. and it was the pemmican that fed the settlers that moved across America was given to my, by the Native Americans so we've thrived on that for, for centuries we got in this idea because there was some pretty poorly done science by a guy named Ansel Keys which looked at correlation between countries that ate fat and had heart disease but he kind of ignored a lot of countries where the data didn't stack up. It's like just cherry picking the countries you want. For example, France had one of the highest butter and saturated fat intakes of any country in the world, and they had the second lowest heart disease risk compared to Japan. And so he, we basically got this meme going in the culture that, that fat was bad, and he was a very vocal and enthusiastic supporter of this idea that fat was bad. And he convinced the American Heart Association that then led to the changes in our government policies, that then led to the food pyramid that was told us to eat six to 11 servings of bread, rice, cereal, and pasta a day, and to eat fats and oil sparingly. I mean, we, we really had this huge movement. And a lot of it was actually sort of behind the scenes kind of manipulated by dark forces. I don't know if you heard recently, but the sugar industry in the 60s hired two Harvard scientists, the top nutrition scientists at the time in the country, Fred Stair, who was the head of the Harvard Nutrition Department, and Mark Hegstead, one of the leading researchers on fat, and saturated fat is bad. They hired them, paid them the equivalent of $49,000 in today's dollars to write a review in the New England Journal of Medicine saying that fat was bad and sugar was okay because there was increasing data that sugar was actually a big cause of heart disease, right? And then they, completely swayed public opinion. And now, you know, in, in the, 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 there's financial disclosures. You have to disclose who's funding the studies. But back then they didn't. And so you had the most prominent journal in the world by two of the most prominent nutritionists saying sugar is not a problem, fat's bad. And then that led to the tsunami of low fat uh, initiatives that has really driven our obesity and diabetes epidemic. I mean, we, we now are the fattest one of the fattest countries in the world. 70% of us are overweight. One in two have prediabetes or type two diabetes. And it's really because we've, we've eaten a diet that's caused you to become more insulin resistant. That's the key biology here. So when you eat sugar and starch, your body like becomes numb to the effects of insulin. So you need to produce more and more. But here's the problem. Insulin is a fat storage hormone. It's like fertilizer for your fat cells. So whatever fuel is running around your blood, it just shoves it into belly fat. And that causes inflammation. That causes you to be hungry because you're starving. You're starving. It slows your metabolism. So it's like a triple whammy. You slow your metabolism, you get hungry, and your fat gets locked in the fat cells. And on top of that, you get lazy and tired, so you don't wanna move. So it's really a horrible thing that happens. And when you eat starch and sugar, that's what's going on in your body. When you eat fat, the opposite happens. So we all like, thought, oh, you fat in your body, the word fat, same thing. It's like, you know, fat makes you fat, it has more calories and carbs, it's all about calories. That's really been overturned. This idea that all calories are the same is just one of the biggest myths that's propagated by the government and the food industry, which tells us that everything is the same. You could have a thousand calories of soda or a thousand calories of broccoli. It's all the same when you eat it. Well, that's just nonsense. That doesn't make any sense at all, even to someone who's a kindergarten student, if you ask them that question. Because when you burn them in a laboratory the same, when you eat them, they affect your hormones, they affect your immune system, they affect your microbiome. You know, like, let me break it down for you. So you, let's say you just take a big gulp, right? That's 46 teaspoons of sugar. That's 750 calories. That immediately increases insulin. It causes you have high triglycerides, low HDL, fatty liver, causes inflammation, causes your testosterone to go down if you're a guy and become impotent, causes if you're a woman to get hair on your face. I mean, it creates all this cascade of bad effects. There's no fiber. 
there's no nutrients, and it's all sugar. If you take 750 calories of broccoli, that's 21 cups of broccoli. There's half a teaspoon of sugar in that total, natural sugar. There's 35 grams of fiber. There's all kinds of phytochemicals, vitamins and minerals that have profoundly different effects on your hormones, on your metabolism. It produces cancer, lowers cholesterol, improves your metabolism, and, and it helps your microbiome as opposed to doing all the opposite things. Same calories, but very different effects on your body. Absolutely. Yeah, this is, this is so enlightening because mm -hmm. kind of getting back to because a lot of us hearing this stuff, we would think like, where, where did we go wrong? How did this get permeated into our culture? And it goes back to some faulty science that yep. then just people began to believe it was true. And what, yep. I, what I like to say all the time, uh, Mark, is that when you teach smart people the wrong thing, they become world class at doing the wrong thing. <laughs> so nobody is like really asking questions and wondering where is yeah. this actually coming from because you look mm -hmm. at the results and I love that because you put it in the book like we did that we did the low fat thing amazing and I did too yeah. and it's just like why are we getting fatter why are we having more diabetes and you really kind yeah. of break that down in the book to make, yeah. make it make sense and it was um, a perfect storm bad science professional associations jumping on the bandwagon the government creating dietary guidelines the food industry creating a trillion dollar food industry of low fat foods and it was just this perfect storm that happened and thank god you know in 2015 the u.s dietary guidelines the the government organization that actually tells us what to eat changed their recommendations for the first time in 35 years and yeah. said guess what guys we got it wrong Forget about limiting dietary fat. You can eat as much dietary fat as you want. And by the way, uh, cholesterol, it's no longer a nutrient of concern. <laughs> you know, you yeah. can actually eat, eat cholesterol because it has no link to your blood cholesterol or your risk of heart disease. So you can go ahead back and have the whole eggs. And they said we should cut our sugars to less than 10% of our diet, which is still a lot. The World Health Organization says 5%. The American Heart Association says us in 5%. But now, I mean, when you look at 15% of our calories comes from high fructose corn syrup for most kids. Mm, that's crazy, right? Yeah. And you mentioned yeah. earlier the big gulp. Uh, my mom used to get the double gulp, mm -hmm. all right? You had to go in the store. What's they that? Is that a two big gulps? It, you had to make the carton, right? So Because you know the big gulp you go, you pull your, your cup out. The cup would be too big, so they fold them up. And you got, I got to go in there as like a, a 10 year old and I'm like folding up this container to wow. dump all wow. the soda into. Wow. And she killed one of those at least every day, mm -hmm. you know, and then wonder why all of these other symptoms would happen, you know. And so um, we, we are making strides and I've been seeing recently, you know, like vending machines, and especially in schools, they have, quote, healthier options. You know, there's a turn happening for the for the yeah. better. But this information is what really needs to be taught. And so this is where I want to shift the conversation to is focusing on the benefits of fats, because you said it, it's a, it's really a semantics issue. It's yeah. the word, it's the belief in different, in different languages, fat in food and fat on your body are two different words. That's right. That's right. I, I that's absolutely right. But it in just our, happens in to our, be a bad coincidence in English. <laughs> right. In our language, it's the same thing. And it's causing a lot of mental, uh, mental distress. You know, I know for me the first time, and this was, you know, over 10 years ago, easy. Um, and I sat down to eat some coconut oil. Like I'm just, I'm taking some, I'm going to eat some coconut. I was like, for sure, I'm going to die. Like I'm going to die right now. <laughs> and as I continued to consume coconut oil, I just got leaner and leaner, healthier and healthier and adding more fats, including saturated fat from natural sources. It's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, so, I, I, when I was, I was a low fat vegetarian for a long time, over yeah. 10 years and my body was a little flabby. I was a little overweight. I didn't have much muscle even though I was exercising way more than I am now. And suddenly I sort of started looking at the research and going, wait a minute, this doesn't make any sense. Like, this isn't what we should be doing. This problem of insulin resistance is the key. So I cut out all this starch and sugar. I mean, I used to eat pasta every day. I thought it was a health food, right? <laughs> right. Pasta, pizza, these are health foods. So, so basically I changed my diet, started eating more good quality protein, lots of good fats, cut out some starch and sugar. And now at 57, I have more muscle mass with less exercise, my metabolism is better, it's it's really unbelievable. I mean, I, I, I caught a picture. I was going through my photo album. And I'm like, I thought a picture of myself from 20 years ago. I'm like, oh, my God, like without, <laughs> without a shirt on on the beach. And I'm like, uh -huh. wow. And I'm like, I, I don't ever lifted a weight in my life. And I'm like, and you just, you know, you just look at the changes that happen in your body when you eat the right foods. It builds muscle. Eating fat builds muscle. Eating fat and good quality protein builds muscle and loses body fat. And I think at the end of the day, people are willing. I mean, the, the end user is wanting the best. Yeah. And, and we're trying. That whole non-fat, why we took to it is because we're thinking, oh, well, that's better. 
-hmm. or, you know, that's going to be the answer or I'm really trying to align with the right thing, but without the right information. Again, those that teach, mm -hmm. as you said, they learn how to be do, be great at doing the wrong thing. Well, on the receiving end, you know, we're getting taught and yeah. fed the thing, and so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna um, gravitate toward yeah. it. We're gonna incline to it, and so here we are. Exactly. So, what do we do then? You know, um, the, one of the sections in your book, the skinny on fats. How is how are fats <laughs> nice actually title. so beneficial for our body? Let's start with let's start, let's start with appetite. Let's start with that yeah. uh, that well, very let's tricky break it down because it's like for heart disease, for cancer, for diabetes, for Alzheimer's, for right. weight loss. Wow. It's really the strategy that works, and it and and it works only under one condition, which is you eat the right fats and you get rid of the starch and sugar or dramatically reduce it. Think of it as a drug. You know, I love sugar. Everybody loves sugar. But I, I think of it as a recreational drug, right? Yeah. I like tequila, but I'm not having it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, right? <laughs> Most of us have dessert for breakfast. Cereal is 75% sugar. Bagels, muffins, donuts. I mean, pancakes, French toast. I mean, you name it. American culture is dessert for breakfast, right? Pancakes with maple syrup. That is the worst possible thing you can do for your health. And, and what that does, and the reason, you know, fat is so good is because it doesn't raise insulin. Yeah. And this is like, I just want to explain this a little bit because insulin you need, but if you have too much insulin, it actually turns on the factory to make all the bad cholesterol. So it causes heart attacks. It turns on the cancer pathways to lead to cancer, particularly breast, ovarian, uh, you know, prostate cancer, colon cancer. And it, it leads to obviously type two diabetes, which is rampant. Now it's it's exploding. We've seen, a, I think a 400% increase in diabetes since 1980. And even Alzheimer's and dementia is linked to eating sugar. We call it now type three diabetes. And all these are reversed by eating fat. So for example, if you take a type one diabetic, they have a pancreas that doesn't work. They can't make insulin. They could eat 10,000 calories a day and they wouldn't get a pound. In fact, they're losing weight because they have no insulin. Yeah. Now, that's not a good thing, but <laughs> when you take someone who's not diabetic and you shut their insulin production down to a minimal level, they will automatically lose weight. When you shut the f f of insulin down by cutting out the starch and the sugars, and it's in everything, right? It's in our right. salad dressings, it's in our pasta sauce. I mean, there's more sugar in pasta sauce for your spaghetti than there is in Oreo cookies. Right, than two Oreo cookies. Yeah. In your morning yogurt, there's more sugar than in your soda. So when you when you cut that stuff out and you start to add good quality fat and protein, you're not producing the insulin. And then all of a sudden your body shifts into healing mode. You start releasing fat from the fat cells. You speed up your metabolism. You cut your hunger. So you're not hungry all the time. I mean, sugar and starch are addictive. They literally activate the brain center for addiction, just like mm -hmm. heroin or cocaine. In fact, in animal studies, Rats will work eight times harder to get sugar than cocaine. And if they're already addicted to cocaine, they'll switch over to eating the sugar, Whoa. right? If they're getting IV cocaine, they can hit the lever and get as much as they want, they'll go to the sugar. If they're on an electric shock pad and they're getting shocked while they're eating sugar, they'll still eat the sugar till they almost die because that's how addictive it is. That's so can great. Can we so be more specific like on what sugar because sugar can be a broad term, but I know that there's... Yeah, no, no. You know, I mean everything. I mean yeah. everything that raises your blood sugar. You okay. know, whether it's your morning latte, whether it's uh, your salad dressing with sugar in it, whether it's uh, bread, whether it's even too much starch like potatoes and rice, whether it's honey, maple syrup, okay. you know, organic raw cane sugar, whether it's any kind of natural agave, this or that. There's all these fancy alternative, quote, healthy sugars. Mm -hmm. They really pretty much all do the same thing. And even diet sodas and alternative sweeteners also seem to have bad effects on the body and the brain. They seem to make you hungrier. They activate weight gain. They slow your metabolism. There's just all these horrible things that happen. In fact, this soda tax has been implemented in seven counties since the last election, which is a good thing, including Philadelphia, which outlawed not just, uh, which put taxes not just on soda, but on diet sodas too. Yeah. You know, well, if it's like the rats, the, then they'll still right. pay. Those are, these rats are like eating cocaine and like sugar, turning into like Master Splinter on like crack or whatever <laughs> and uh, karate chop anyways. But it's just understanding that we are functioning in much the same ways. That's why they're using these simulations with rats because in a strange way, you know, our, we're similar in how our brains are functioning. You've done this so, with humans. Yeah. You've done this with humans. So many people are running around 
addicted to sugar and have no idea about it and choosing yeah. sugar over anything else. So this is why this message is so important. It's not that, okay, try and eat less sugar, but you're saying actually we need to flip this around and add right. in more right. fats because one of the big things is it brings that satiety component. To it because yeah, that's I mean, I mean, for. here's the thing, you know, Sean. When when you look at the advice of the government, of nutritionists, of doctors, it's eat less, exercise more. Yeah. And if you can't do that and you fail, it's your fault because you're just a glutton and you're lazy. And if you just got off your butt, stop stuffing your face, you'd lose weight. Well, that doesn't make sense given the science, which is that when you eat certain foods, you can't control your behavior. When you're addicted to cocaine or heroin, I mean, you know, you know. Why did all these amazing people die of heroin overdose? It's not because they're trying to kill themselves. It's because it's an overwhelming biological thing that happens. And when you see this happen with sugar, it, we blame the victim, right? We blame the victim. We say, it's your fault. But when you, when you actually look at the science, we now know that this biology happens in humans. When you took sort of an amazing study, it was done at Harvard. They took a group of overweight guys and they gave them different milkshakes and and – they were both exactly the same calories, exactly the same fiber, protein, fat, and carbs. Exactly the same, except the difference was one of the carbs in one of them was a high sugar carb and one was a low sugar carb, a low start. Like in other words, it didn't raise the blood sugar fast. And they looked at what happened to these people <clears throat> and their brains lit up like a Christmas tree who ate the sugary starch in the area of addiction. And they were hungrier and their insulin went up higher. And all these things happened, which was actually showing that these these foods are really driving these primitive behaviors. So I wouldn't blame yourself. I wouldn't fight yourself. And the beautiful thing about when you switch from eating all this sugar and starch to eating the fat, your body just wakes up. You have more energy. You get rid of what I call FLC syndrome. That's when you feel like crap. Mm -hmm. You're not struggling to control your diet. You just naturally lose weight without being hungry. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. You know, what I want to do next, I want to talk about um, the different kinds of fats, because this is a big conversation that can still, you know, there are some yep. fats that can't hurt you, but we want to do that right after this break. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, with all of the things that we're exposed to today, the environmental toxicity, the weird stuff showing up in our food supply, we've got to do things to really support our immune system. Our immune system is really running the show on so many different levels to keep us healthy and one of the most powerful things for supporting a healthy immune system is making sure that we're getting in some immunomodulators. So what does that mean? These are substances that can help to elevate our immune system in response to things that might be trying to creep their way into our body, into our cells, and defend us against those things. But it can also bring the immune system back down, calm it down if things are running too hot, aka we're dealing with some autoimmunity. We need things that are intelligent. Many drugs out there that are pushed through pharmaceutical companies, though they mean well, they push your immune system in one direction, and that can really mess things up on the back end, you know, leading to AKA side effects. So to avoid that, getting some natural immunoregulators are going to be a powerful thing you add into your life. How I do that, and it's been a consistent basis pretty much every single day for the past three months now, I've been using every day and even had it this morning, the incredible mushroom elixirs from Four Sigmatic. So head over to foursigmatic.com forward slash model. So that's F-O-R-S-I-G-M-A-T-I-C.com forward slash model. And you're going to get 10% off all these amazing superfood elixirs. My favorite is the Chaga. And Chaga has been clinically shown to increase your NK cell activity. So your natural killer cells over 300%. It's also the most powerful antioxidant that we've ever seen in the history of humanity that humans actually consume. Powerful antioxidant, powerful anti-cancer, powerful immune system regulator. So that's what I use in the morning. I'll get some chaga and sometimes I'll have it straight or I'll blend it with some you know, hot water, some healthy fat. So this could be some ghee, this could be some grass-fed butter, this could be some coconut oil, some MCT oil, things like that. With a little bit of cinnamon, maybe some other fun medicinal herbs you can throw in there. But this has been the daily thing that I've done for the past few months. And I highly recommend you start doing the same thing. They also have the mushroom coffees, and my wife is a big fan of these. And so the mushroom coffee mix has cordyceps and chaga in there. And today she ran out. She was like, where's my, where's my coffee? You know, and she's not even, ever since we've been together, she hasn't been a coffee drinker. But this has been her daily thing. She loves the way it makes her feel. And she doesn't get some weird kind of caffeine spike and crash as well. So head over and check them out. Foursigmatic.com forward slash model for 10% off. Now back to the show. 
And we are back. We are talking today with Dr. Mark Hyman, best-selling author, 13 mm. books now, and with many New York book. Times bestsellers, yes. And so we're talking about eat fat, get thin, and breaking down this once and for all fear of fat and what the real truth is behind our dietary recommendations. And so one of the things we want to talk about now is the different types of fat. So let's start with, you know, we've got natural fats that are going to be yeah. coming from real whole foods and then mm -hmm. vegetable oils. Let's talk about vegetable right. oils first. Okay, well, the first thing I want to say is that, you know, we're going to get into all that, but it's really easy to remember about fat. Is it come from a whole food or is it some weird processed thing, right? We don't eat saturated fat. We don't eat monounsaturated. We don't eat polyunsaturated fats. We don't eat omega-6 fats. We eat food. Right. right. Yes. So, Thank you. Yes. Right. <laughs> you eat butter. You eat eggs. You eat nuts. You eat, you know, olive oil. You eat avocados. You eat fish. Right. These foods contain the right fats. When you start extracting fats in a highly technological way, from, for example, you said vegetable oils, that changes them, and and it changes the quantities we're eating. So we need to just think about the foods we're eating, and then we don't have to worry so much about it. But let's get into this omega six question because this this refined vegetable oil issue is very controversial, and I have a very different opinion than a lot of experts. But I I think I'm right, so <laughs> I'm going to tell you why. And it's not just you know because I just randomly think I'm right. I don't I have not spent my life studying one point of view. Right, I I'm open to. Whatever the truth of the day is, I don't have my entire career invested in being right about saying we should eat a low-fat diet like some people. I don't have my career invested in studying vegetable oils. I mean, I really am open to whatever the truth is. And so I, when I researched my book, I looked at what is the truth about omega-6 oils? Well, these are vegetable oils. Well, what's a vegetable? It's not broccoli oil, right? It's safflower oil. It's 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 canola oil, it's soybean oil, it's corn oil. I mean, these oils really never existed in our diet 100 years ago. We, we have had a thousand times increase in our soybean oil consumption in the last 100 years. It's now about 10% of our diet. That's huge, and that's an enormous amount of these refined vegetable oils that besides imbalancing the omega-3 and omega-6 ratios, which causes more inflammation, they're also highly unstable, they oxidize, they cause more inflammation, and they're more uh, risky for you. Now, a lot of studies show they may not be so bad, but that's when they combine studies looking at omega-3 and omega-6. When you just separate out the omega-6s, the data don't look so good. And there was a really powerful study, which you couldn't do now. This is a fascinating study. It was done, published last year, but done 40 years ago yeah. by the guy who actually was trying to prove saturated fat was bad. This is Ansel Keys, the guy who told you about earlier who kind of started the whole thing. And he basically said, you know, let's study saturated fat, butter versus corn oil. And we'll, we have 9,000 people in mental institutions. Let's just study them. They're captive. We couldn't get this through an ethical board, review board now, but they did it back then in the 60s. And they buried the study for 40 years because they didn't want to publish it. And some researchers from the NIH recently found the data. They took it out of the basement of this guy who was the son of one of the researchers. They analyzed the data and they found that, God, when the people, when they uncovered the data, the people who ate the saturated fat and the butter had far less heart disease than the ones who had the corn oil, even though the ones on the corn oil had their cholesterol, their LDL lowered the most. So I think it brings up a lot of issues, but I think we should not be eating a lot of processed oils that are extracted through these high heat solvents, and, and other kinds of deodorizers and compounds that are, are really creating a problem, not to mention all the glyphosate and soybean oil. So there's really a lot of issues around these refined oils. I don't recommend people eat them. Yeah, when you hear vegetable oil, I remember when it first kind of hit market very strongly and my grandmother's using it and my mother and it's yeah. like vegetable yeah. oil. Ooh, yeah. It's not Sounds broccoli healthy. oil. That was funny. It's not <laughs> kale oil, bro. <laughs> this right, is right. like from right. a rapeseed, you know, it's mm -hmm. just canola oil, corn oil, all this stuff. And yeah, yeah. we know the problems that it has. It's pro-inflammatory, you know, and oxidized Absolutely. very quickly. Mm -hmm. But um, getting back to this understanding with the whole food sources, you know, and mm -hmm. there are ways that we can utilize some of this stuff. Like, so let's talk about olive oil. What's your opinion yeah. on olive oil? So olive oil has been used for thousands of years. It, it's minimal processing. They basically just squeeze the olives. It's not some high-tech process right. that they do in factories. And it's full of good fats, like mono and saturated fat. Also has 20% saturated fat, by the way. And it also has polyphenols, which are these powerful antioxidant, anti-inflammatory compounds. If you have a good olive oil, you taste it, and you can feel this little bitter tang on the back of your yeah. throat. That's how it's a good olive oil. There's a lot of bastardized olive oils out there. You have to be careful because they're diluted or mixed with other oils. But really good olive oil is so good for you. And there's been so many studies on, on benefits. In fact, one huge one, they looked at 7,000 people, and they found that they, they gave them either a low-fat diet 
or they gave them olive oil, a liter of olive oil a week, liter. which seems like a lot. A liter. A liter like, 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 like almost like 500 calories a day of olive oil. And the ones who had the olive oil had a dramatic reduction in their risk of heart attacks. And they had to stop the study early because it was unethical to continue and not give the people who weren't getting the olive oil the olive oil. <laughs> Boy, would you look at that? Right. You know, so incredible. And by the way, with the right. olive oil, he just said it. Quality is everything, you know. And so you notice most times they're, they're bottled in dark glass. They should be. Because, right, it's no. kind of prized like wine, you know, and it's it's uh, light sensitive, heat sensitive. You don't so, want to keep it on the counter. Keep it in the cupboard, light, closed. Yeah, exactly. And it's just, it's yummy with certain <laughs> things, you know. It's just great. Yummy with everything. Yeah. And so um, let's move on. Let's talk a little bit about... Uh, some of the other whole food sources, like uh, animal yeah. protein sources. So, you know, people think, oh, saturated fat from animals is bad, right? But but what do we really know about that? I think, again, the data was pretty shoddy. And when you looked at these new large reviews and new people looking at this data again, there's very little evidence that it's a problem. In fact, it may be helpful. Uh, Dr. Krauss from Oakland, he's done huge reviews. Uh, they, they, there's another study that looked at 72 studies I think 19 countries, 600,000 people. They looked at randomized trials, observational trials. They looked at blood levels of fatty acids. They could find no link, like no link between heart disease and total fat or heart disease and saturated fat. They did find that omega-3 fats were better and beneficial and that trans fats were bad, which pretty much everybody knew already. And the data was pretty compelling. And when you look at the biology, there is no such thing as saturated fat. There are saturated fats. The ones from coconut oil are different than the ones from butter, right? And they all have different properties and they all work in differently in the body. And so, for example, coconut oil is 90% saturated fat. Butter is 60% saturated fat. And yet coconut oil has all these beneficial properties. It's got the same fat that's in, in breast milk called lauric acid. In fact, breast milk is 25% saturated fat. Why do you think Mother Nature would put saturated fat in breast milk if it was such a bad thing. And 25% of the calories are, are saturated fat, which is you know far different than our government's telling us to eat. So basically what the government's saying is that babies should not have breast milk because they're telling us to reduce our saturated fat to less than 10% of our calories. It just doesn't make any sense. And here, yeah. give them this can of formula with something right. that we created. So Which is vegetable oil and sugar, basically. <laughs> right. It's bananas and pajamas, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, saturate. I love that you're breaking that down because another thing that we need to get over, because when you hear saturated, not not just fat, but saturated fat, it makes you think like I'm getting, sa I'm saturating my body in gooey uh, butter arms, right? Like I'm going to make, right. I'm going to for sure get huge, you know? Gooey and so but what it is, we're talking about fat molecules. And he said if saturated fats, these are multiple fat molecules and they have no double bonds. And that's mm. pretty much it. It's, it's really just simple science. And this is built into food, right? Yep. But right. Yep. When, you're, when we're manufacturing like some of these kind of quote man-made foods or we're creating things like these trans fatty acids, yes, that is definitely a problem. So that's bad. That's vegetable oil where they put where they put hydrogen yeah. to make it like a butter, but it actually turned out to be so bad for us that the government now ruled it is not safe to eat, and yet it's still in all the stores because they gave the food companies a long runway to keep it in there. That's so sad. But this is why your work is so important. Uh, one other thing that I want to talk about is the relationship between our, and I know that you, of course, wrote with uh, Dr. Daniel Amen, but with yes. fats and our brain health. Let's talk a little bit oh about that. Oh, my God. That. So important. Well, your brain is mostly fat. Right, You're, if you actually analyze what your brain is, 60% fat, and it's it's a lot of it's omega-3 fats, saturated fat, cholesterol, I mean, it's horrible things. It's actually what your brain is built from. And when you look at the studies, you know, when you see people on low-fat diets, they're depressed, they're unhappy, they, they're foggy. When you look at treatments for depression, they're using omega-3 fats, they're getting rid of vegetable oils, they're, you're looking at studies, for example, on dementia. I mean, we now know that that actually they're using even 70% fat diets for treating people with dementia to help yes. wake up their brains because it runs so much better on fat. So I think I think that, that we've gotten this whole story wrong. And I, I think, you know, there are even regular cancer doctors using, using uh, ketogenic diets for treating brain cancer to help shut off the cancer pathways. And epilepsy is another thing as well. Oh, yeah, epilepsy. We, for a long time, we've known that. That's pretty standard medicine right. now is using ke – when all the drugs don't work, you give them fat. That's so <laughs> – right? That's you know, and it's been there for so long, but it's overlooked for just general health. You know, yeah. it's such a, such a powerful kind of paradigm shift for us. So – uh, thank you, man. So 
this is so eat fat get thin new york times bestseller but now i've got the cookbook all right cookbook, so let's yes. talk a little bit about the cookbook what's your tell me first of all well, it might be hard but like what's your favorite recipe uh why did you make the cookbook when you've got some stuff in here as well well there's great recipes in the cookbook but you know at the end of the day you know as a doctor i want people to heal and in order for them to heal they need to know how to use the right medicine and the best medicine on the planet is food it's a more powerful drug than anything you'll find in a prescription bottle. It works faster, better, cheaper, and yet most people don't know how to cook. So, like I said, you know, when I when I see a patient, I don't give them a prescription. I give them a cookbook because I want them to actually take back their kitchens, take back their health, and not be so intimidated by making delicious food. So it doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to take a lot of time. It doesn't have to be difficult. People get so overwhelmed. But it's like any skill. If I said, oh, if you never flew an airplane, I'm like, go fly that airplane. You know, my God, you know, this is tough. But, you know, if you learn how to be a pilot, you can fly a plane. But Driving a car is so much easier. It doesn't take that much time, but you learn how to drive a car. But like if I said, go drive a car, you know how to drive a car, it's scary. But getting in the kitchen, some basic skills, how to chop vegetables, how to make some simple meals, it's super simple life skills, and it makes a huge difference in your life. So that's really why I wrote the cookbook, to empower people with delicious, yummy recipes and to get off of that fear of fat. And there's some great recipes in there. I, I, um, I have great turkey burgers in there. We've got frittatas. That one I made with like kimchi and coconut milk oh, yeah. and whole eggs and grass-fed butter. Uh, I have these brownies in there that are amazing. I've got these uh, no-bake brownies. It's essentially cocoa nibs, cocoa powder, coconut butter, coconut oil, and uh, and actually walnuts. So it's got like and cocoa and cocoa butter. So you've got all these different fats and and nuts and crunchy things. It's so good. I love this recipe. I mean, I, I eat three of them today. <laughs> <laughs> This is it. First of all, this sounds like sexy food right <laughs> yeah, here, you know, and that's I mean, what it's pancakes. We got pancakes in there. I got pancakes with coconut flour and coconut oil and walnuts. Delicious. Awesome. And there's this is what's so beautiful about this is we're we're shifting over and using better ingredients for many of our favorites, you know, but then it gets back to that kind of wholesome connection with our diet, with our nutrition. We're looking for satiety. We're looking for uh, the part of the reason we want to eat food is because it tastes good. We're looking for flavor, and you can either yeah. get that flavor sensation through delicious fat foods, like that fatty thing is it hits yeah, those Yeah, that's top, what makes those, food taste good, things. right? Or you can get it through the other method of being a sugar addict, right. you know, and that's mm. what we're looking for. So this is the solution here. It's not just the fact that we're telling telling people don't eat sugar. We're giving them something better, mm -hmm. right? That's and right. you've helped to, to make that happen, so thank you. And uh, I've got welcome. one final question for you. Um, I like to ask my, my guests this question, and I'm curious to hear what you have to say. What is the model that you're here to set with the way that you're living your life personally? Well, you know, I, I learned all this stuff by doing it myself, right? And I went through bad health issues, and I, you know, I feel like in order for me to understand this, I have to do it on myself. So I don't, I don't tell people to do things that I haven't really tried or experimented with. And for me, you know, the truth is that I wake up every day and, and I want to help people get healthy. It's, it's, it's just something that has driven me since I was so sick and realized that so many people suffer needlessly and that there's a solution. And so that's why I'm so passionate. That's why I travel around the world, why I speak, why I write books, why I see patients, why I'm creating the Center Cleveland Clinic, because, you know, I can't really go to bed at night and, and feel good about life unless I'm actually doing something to make a difference. And so I, in order to do that, I have to thrive. I have to take care of myself. I have to eat properly. I have to exercise. I meditate every day. I do all the things that actually help me thrive. And in that way, I can just be happy and do good work. And it's all like, it's just, it's all like a big circle of, of amazing life. I love that. You're answer, able Mark. to give from your overflow rather than your reserve, which many of us are giving yeah. from what's left. Yeah, and that's right. By living it and, and having that model. And like you said, thriving, you can give from that place of abundance. Yeah. Absolutely. Love it. Mark, thank you so much for your brilliance and for putting so much yeah. time and energy into writing all these amazing books. And I know it's it's something that's similar to me. You know, when I was running my practice for over 10 years and I had people coming in, I would be telling people the same thing over and over and over again to different people, you know, breaking out the board and like writing down the kids. Okay, so this is how diabetes works, you know, and then I have to do it with the next person. And right, right, right. I was just like, you know what? I should just write this down, <laughs> or, or, you know, or like do something so other people can get access. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you've done that with your books and with your work. And, you know, of course, we both spoke at a, an event recently with Jim Quick and seeing yeah. you, you know, speaking and all that good stuff. And I just appreciate who you are Thank as you. a person and helping Thank to get this you. message out. Thank you. So can you let everybody know where they can find your books and also where they can connect with you online? 
Sure. So you can go to anywhere, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, bookstores, get my books, or, or you go to my website, drhyman.com. We actually have an online challenge where we help people work through this program together in community because community is so powerful. So so we have an Eat Fat, Get Thin challenge. Go to eatfatgetthin.com. Also, people really want to geek out. I've created an online conference called the Fat Summit. I have two parts to it with literally dozens and dozens of experts who I'm interviewing and about the, some of the most uh, interesting aspects of nutrition and diet around today. Ooh, the Fat Summit. I love that. <laughs> Perfect. It's what I call you separate fat from fiction. Oh, yeah. man. <laughs> this You've got so many T-shirt worthy things. Oh, it's easy. amazing. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank you so much. Everybody, thank you for tuning into the show today. I hope you got a lot of value out of this. And this has helped to really cement this w- awakening to the fact that dietary fats, what we call fats in our in our language, are incredibly Healthy, number one, but also a big necessity for you being the best version of yourself. And to drop this fear, delete that file, all right? Well, maybe you can remember it a little bit like, you remember when? Right. You remember when we used to think (laughs) that was bad for us? Right. And I can't remember because my brain's messed up, you know, because I, (laughs) so, but just really tune in today and really understand that we want to strive to make sure we're getting high quality fats on a regular basis at every meal, you know, that should be a part of Mm -hmm of who you are and how you're approaching reality. So uh, and Dr. Mark Hyman is the man to really help to package this up for us to understand. So make sure to check out his work. Make sure to follow him online. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your day. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.